Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by Umesh Kumar Mehta, CIO of Samco Mutual Fund and Sneha Suri, Lead Fund Analyst at Value Research. We'll be diving into the newly launched Samco Multicap Fund. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Coming to you first, Umesh, what makes multi-cap funds an all-weather investment and, you know, between flexi-cap and multi-cap funds, which one would you say stands out more in today's market and why? See, multi-cap fund, I think the beauty is the discipline, the discipline of balanced approach, you know, from large, mid, small. And as a, as a mandate of law, at least 25% has to be in large cap, at least 20 in mid and at least 25% in small cap. So this by far is the beauty which no other category has. Today, if you look at the flexi cap, although they have the flexibility, but large 75% of the portfolio currently is on large caps. And large cap is obviously 100% large cap. Similarly, on small cap is 100% small cap. And small cap, they don't have a drawdown protection, right? So futures are not futures is not there. And therefore, investor will have to take an exit call because fund manager can't do anything. There is no edging facility available. So in that sense, uh, multi-cap is a very superior category. And this is a recent category four years ago, SEBI had announced. But by far, this is one of the best as far as the balanced approach is concerned. And just like our daily health, uh, we require a balanced food. I think multi-cap is that category for investors. Right, Sneha, coming to you, from a broader perspective, how do you view the multi-cap category's performance compared to other equity funds? And what should investors keep in mind when selecting uh, between multi-cap and flexi-cap funds? Right. So, uh, as uh, Umesh Kumar just mentioned, that when we talk about multi-cap funds, they are often compared with flexi-cap funds, you know, within the equity funds domain. Uh, because both of them offer a diversified approach by investing across large, mid and small cap companies. And the key distinction being the uh, that multi-cap funds are required to allocate at least a quarter, 25% to each of these segments. Whereas flexi-cap funds have no such restrictions, which actually kind of gives fund managers an edge, you know, towards flexibility because they enjoy a greater degree of flexibility when it comes to building the portfolio. But when it comes to the performance aspect, uh, multi-cap funds have actually outpaced flexi-cap counterparts in their limited history, uh, if you look at the calendar year returns. Now, uh, multi-cap funds, given their minimum fixed allocations, they actually benefit from this forced diversification at all times. Now, having said that, multi-cap funds, while they do hold merit as being part of, you know, uh, an investor's core equity portfolio, the category is relatively new uh, since they came into existence only three, four years back, uh, starting 2021. So they are yet to sort of prove their mettle. When it comes to the things that one should keep in mind when selecting between multi-cap and flexi-cap, the key consideration aspects revolve around the flexibility versus the mandate. So, uh, as mentioned earlier, flexi-caps have more freedom in allocation, whereas multi-caps come with a fixed minimum allocation uh, to mid and small cap stocks specifically, which actually gives them inherently a uh, more aggressive style of investing. So most flexi-cap funds tend to usually have a lower allocation of about 30% to these multi-cap and, uh, sorry, mid-cap and small-cap stocks than the mandated 50% of uh, multi-cap. So into this factor, the latter actually tends to be, be a bit more aggressive in relative terms. Now, these aggressive mid and small cap allocations can actually help multi-cap investors make substantial returns in the long run, but may be subject to higher intermittent volatility as well. So it's essential to understand one's own risk tolerance when you know choosing between the two. Right now, coming to Samco's multi-cap fund, which allocates 25% to companies beyond the Nifty 500. So what was the rationale behind this decision and how do you see this allocation contributing to the fund's performance over time? Yeah, so at least 25% to large, mid and small. So out of 75%, 25% is a free float, right? As we as fund managers, we have got discretion and therefore uh, we will invest in small caps beyond Nifty 500. So now let's come to the potential. So the potential of large cap, so this is the Nifty 100 index. So and since 2005, 1 lakh rupee has become 12 lakh rupee. And the micro cap, 
250 stocks index, 1 lakh rupee has become 24 lakh rupees. So obviously the alpha that investors will get from investing in the micro cap. So micro cap people will think that fundamentally they are probably a little weaker, etc. So what we did, we did a comparison of small caps with smaller caps, right? So micro cap uh, with a small cap index. So there are 250 odd stocks in both the universe and X financials. So when we did that analysis, I think the numbers were surprising. Three year sales growth for micro cap was 30% and for small cap was 27%. Uh, three year pad growth for micro cap was 59%. For small cap was 54%. And return on capital, the most efficiency, the most important in terms of efficiency for micro cap it was 25% and for small cap was 22%. So that is how the re return profile will improve. Fundamentally also micro caps are, uh, are, far, uh, are, are solid and therefore this will add to the overall alpha to the investor. And just one more thing. See today the fastest growing category in last three years is the, is the multi cap. It has grown by 84%. Uh, and the, uh, the other fastest growing category is small cap, which people say is the fastest, but no, small cap has grown by around 49%. Thematics have grown by around 49-50%. So by far, today smart investors are investing in multi cap as a category because you can see the growth rate 84% uh, on the multi cap side. Right. Now, Sneha, this strategy to include 25% allocation to micro cap stocks beyond the Nifty 500, how does this compare to typical multi cap funds? And, you know, what do you think are the potential risks and rewards for such an approach? So, uh, currently, the active multi cap funds have about 7% exposure to stocks outside the Nifty 500. So, going with a 25% allocation to uh, micro cap stocks really sets this uh, fund uh, apart. To take a stab at the risk and rewards of micro caps, uh, micro caps do face liquidity issues as they can be difficult to buy or sell in large quantities because of their lower trading volumes. Plus, a higher volatility is also evident if we look at the standard deviation, which is around 12.34 versus small caps 8.21 and 5% of Nifty 500. There can also be a higher mortality rate when it comes to micro cap uh, stocks. So if you look at the data, over 50% of micro cap stocks would have been relegated over the past five years with only 10% actually being promoted to mid or small cap indices. Uh, also, micro cap index shows more frequent and severe negative returns than broader indices with 10% negative five year rolling returns compared to Nifty 500's 0.85. Having said that, there are rewards that evolve around, uh, revolve around micro caps because they offer significant growth potential, you know, opportunities for outperformance as they have the potential to be promoted to mid or small cap. And the diversification aspect also helps because one gets exposure in terms of, you know, the less represented uh, sectors and company sizes. And of course, uh, skilled fund managers can actually identify these undervalued stocks and these companies often recover strongly after market downturns. Prish, could you walk us through your stock selection process and what key factors or frameworks do you prioritize when picking stocks across large, mid and small and even beyond the Nifty 500? Yeah. So for stock selection process, we rely on our uh, in-house algorithms that we have built, uh, which identify stocks. This is the earnings uh, growth, uh, price momentum and quality factors. So combining all three in various forms and in various weights. So we will create a, a portfolio of 2025 20, names in the large cap side, 2025 20, names in the mid, 2025 20, names in the small and around 40, 45 names in the micro cap. So why 40, 45 names in a micro cap? I will uh, dwell this in a while, but this is how uh, uh, our stock selection process will identify stocks. So basically stocks that are in uptrending phase uh, uh, the, the, our system will able, will identify those stocks and if stocks are out of form, if stocks are falling, uh, we will get rid of stocks. So we will have a little more uh, churn in our portfolio. Basically, we will have a team of stocks that are, uh, and at any point in time, there will be certain stocks that are moving upwards or in a stage two, what we call as a trending phase. So we will try and accumulate stocks which are in trending phase and get rid of stocks which are in either distribution or in downtrending phase. 
Okay, and how do you handle rebalancing across market gaps? What are the signals or conditions that prompt you to shift allocations between uh, different market caps? So, uh, this is a very good question. So, 25, 25, 25 is fixed and our 25 will get into a micro cap when market is in bull phase. When markets enter into bear market, uh, the micro caps that we have, uh, the smaller cap stocks, that we will sell in the market and that's why we will have we have around 40 45 stocks uh, we will have in our portfolio because it's easier to sell micro caps when you have a wider uh, uh, area of stocks uh, this 25 percent smaller cap stocks uh, stops uh, stocks beyond if you find it we will buy the large caps then and during bear markets our large cap will become 50 percent this 50 percent we will hedge through uh, fndo uh, and balance 25 percent in the mid cap 10% are on an average hedgeable stock, which have der derivative. So 50 and 10, 60% of our portfolio, we will hedge during downtrends or bear market. Small cap, we can't do anything because at least 25% has to be small cap. Small cap don't have any FNO. So this is how during drawdown, during bear markets, we will have 60% seat belt for our entire portfolio uh, in the multi cap. And I think this five, this uh, is a very superior uh, way of managing risk for the investors when the markets are on the downside. So the upside of smaller caps, etc. Uh, and the downside, uh, we will get into the hedging mode and shift our floating for the floating 25% into the large caps. Okay. Now with your focus on trend and momentum investing, how do you safeguard the fund during unexpected market shifts like COVID-19? Correct. So, uh, there are two types, there are two sets of turnover that uh, uh, this multi cap will have. One is the uh, regs, at times regular stock specific regic, right? So that's one kind of turnover. And uh, three, four months down the line, we will, uh, once the fundamental data are out, our system will identify if the stocks are slowing down or if the momentum is slowing down, either the quality or on the earnings side or on the price action side. So we will have some amount of churn in, on the stock specific at three, four months of interval, some few stocks will get changed. The other part of uh, turnover will come from the dynamic management of our equity curve. So we have a set of stocks. If market, if our set of stocks goes beyond a certain statistically defined sig significant levels that we have internally identified, and if they fall beyond that level, we will uh, proportionately reduce the equity curve. So for example, today, if only large caps fall and if they fall and if they keep on falling continuously so we will hedge all our large cap portfolio by selling the futures assuming tomorrow someday the micro cap starts falling on or the the the, um, the flavor of the season changes and micro caps uh, so then we will sell all our micro caps and we will sell in the cash market get that money and get into the large cap so this is how dynamically we will manage cap wise uh, our portfolio we will track our portfolio and then uh, have drawdown protection, have seat belt uh, if markets change the track. And on the upside, we will only get into the, 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 the floating part, we'll get into again the micro gaps. Okay. Sneha, do you believe trends and momentum can sustain long term wealth creation or are they better suited to uh, short or mid term gains? Correct. So, if you see, you know, uh, trends is always a trend is agnostic to any style of investing, whether it is growth momentum value and there are a whole lot of things because what this ultimately the system identifies what are the stocks in stage two there can be any number of stocks which can be in stage two uh, which system is agnostic to any sector any cap any uh, theories any stories so this mathematical precision wherein we don't have biases we don't have our emotions we don't have uh, our own uh, thought processes we don't have our ego as well so this i think uh, uh, managing money uh, uh, through this fashion uh, model driven investing i think is a far superior way of managing investors money see because today wars are also fought by drones and human beings are very rarely seen because they will probably make mistakes errors so similarly uh, my fund managers you know, from 9:15 to 9 uh, 3 13 they will they are guided by the systems and processes they will get signals uh, either it is a stock specific rebalance they will buy or sell or if the entire equity curve has to be hedged or managed uh, they will proportionately sell uh, uh, the the underlying stocks uh, of the futures or if that happens in micro cap they will they will sell the 
micro cap. So I think this is how uh, dynamic management we will do as far as the fund management is concerned. All right, Sneha, would you like to add something there? Right. So generally, momentum-based stock selection comprises picking stocks appreciating sharply over a short period. So this investing form uh, sort of thrives on the strong get stronger principle. But a trend and momentum-based stock selection can lead to a relatively higher churn, as uh, mentioned by Sir here as well. But momentum can be a powerful tool for generating returns in the short to mid term, but it's Success over the longer term can be more uncertain due to, you know, potential reversals in, let's say, the market sentiment or broader economic shifts. So the role in long term wealth creation depends on how they're integrated into the broader investment strategy. So uh, the long term wealth creation typically requires balancing momentum with other strategies such as, you know, value and fundamental investing to ensure stability across uh, different market environments. Uh, so we have tested this uh, since 2005, uh, this multi cap index 50, 20, 25 index of uh, the exchange that is available. So since 2005, the underlying multi cap index has delivered 17 percent CAGR. Our multi-cap model, the style that the, the, what I have described, that multi-cap model has delivered CAGR of 26%. So the 9% alpha has been, and this is across cycle, yeah? so 2005 is a long year, 20 years of history, wherein we had global financial crisis, we had COVID, etc. We had two bull market and bear market, one uh, black swan event. So comparing all this and comparing also the turnover cost the, and comparing the, the churn cost, etc. Everything uh, put in together, I think if the, the strategy can generate 25-26%, I think this is how one should look at it uh, when we look. And these are global best practices. See, uh, when we look at international markets, there are people out there who are following, uh, not following the traditional practices of uh, uh, getting into the balance sheets and identifying growth stocks or value stock or whole lot of styles. But today, the best practices out there are combining uh, fundamentals with price action, uh, getting source data from the primary, uh, which is the company, the fundamental that is called, and then also getting merging it with the stock market data, and then combining and and, and giving an appropriate weight to various factors, uh, 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 the volumes, the the volatility, the standard deviations, the liquidity, and whole lot of things. When we when we aggregate, then the only focus of the strategy becomes only one that we want to generate highest risk adjusted return and on the relative basis. It is not agnostic. It does not care, you know, whether the returns are coming from whichever style it is, whichever cap it is, whichever sector it is, it is going to generate, it is going to create a portfolio of stocks that are uh, better and at, at, they are ahead of the crowd in terms of generating return. So this is how I think one should look at uh, uh, investment strategy. All right. Now, final question. Who would you recommend this fund to? Is it tailored to, for more aggressive investors or can conservative investors benefit from it as well? See, actually, when, when there are seat belts in any fund, right, to that extent, 60% is what we think. So any huge amount of lump sums money can be invested because people will think that there are wars out there in the world, market can go down, valuations are rich. So don't worry. We will sell. We will head. We will manage the risk. Compared to investor in his in, in his own capacity, he may be holding stocks. He will not sell. You think, oh, I am a long-term investor. But what we are here doing is we will hedge the risk, and this is how and that is how the return profile of the underlying index was 17%, and the model is 26%. And this difference alpha comes because of uh, dynamic management. You know, hedging when markets are down, you get out, and then when you get in again, you will be able to buy more. So that is one aspect how alpha gets created. And obviously, the stock selection, it is impossible manually to scan 750 stocks uh, day in and day out and analyze the results and analyze the factors and then analyze the volumes, the price, the volatility, and then again, creating a 2025 20, stocks uh, and, and evaluate them, uh, the stocks that are doing better uh, compared to the peers, compared to the sectors, compared to the cap as well. So I think manually it is impossible, but only systems and processes can really uh, do this job very well. So this is how one should look at it. So basically it is for everyone, conservative or aggressive, but I think lump sum is the right way to look at it. If people want to invest lump sum, 
uh, if people want to get up from their own stocks as well that they think it is risky so get in into this multi cap i think this is a beautiful uh, uh, strategy to make money and just one more add in usa uh, 100 years ago uh, the definition of cap was only mega and small so from 1929 which was a us bull market top uh, and thereafter since 1950 when uh, korea peninsula war, war was ended for this 20 years the the smaller cap stocks have delivered 5% alpha over and above the mega cap so i think alpha of small cap is always there uh, on the table for the investors and the beauty of uh, 25% in uh, small mid and uh, smaller caps beyond nifty 500 i think this is by far one of the uh, more superior way of making long term 5 10 years of wealth for the investors All right, great. With that, it's time for us to wrap up this chat. Thank you both of you for taking time out and speaking with us. Thanks. Thank you.